G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the installation of Linux Mint. Now I'm going to caution you first, if you're doing this as a file manager, in other words, you want to manage files from your system, via the operating system, it doesn't quite work as Unraid and I'll get to that later. So in terms of that, I'd say it's pretty much a waste of time. But if you want to just play around with a, a virtualization machine, a Linux, and you want to do some practicing, it's perfectly fine. But today I'm going to show you how to install it and get to your hard drives anyway. Let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to your storage and we're going to create another pool. And this is the last um, hard drive that we kept in reserve. So this is the 500 uh, gigabyte hard drive and it's true space is actually 400. All right, let's go there. It's going to give you a bit of a warning because we've got no redundancy for this, but you can always do a snapshot save anyway. So we're going to just call this um, uh, Linux Mint, but for this time it's not a test. So I'm taking you along for the real thing here. Beautiful. All right. Uh -huh. Oh, if we just have a quick look at that, see, it's got no, but we probably already knew that anyway. All right, confirm, boom. All right, and there we go, we've got Linux Mint. Now, for this, we don't actually need to worry about a data sheet. Uh, we could go straight to the virtualization. Oh, no, bef before that, what we want to do is go to your download, so you'll have your Linux Mint. We make a, oops, no, not crystal disk. Copy, and then we go to our true NAS, and we're gonna put this in the works, because this is actually a works um, thing. Put that in a folder that we know OS. Look at that, although it's only a gigabit, but all right. Now we go to the virtualization. We, we don't have a virtual machine, so we're gonna add one now. And what are we gonna call this? Oh, it's not actually, oh, so this area, yeah, it wants to know what um, OS you're going to install. So yeah, we're just doing a Linux-based thing and we're just going to call this Mint. Uh, right, right, but description, local clock, yes. BIOS, fine, yep. Shut down, yes. Start at boot, I actually don't want that. Enables player, yes. All right, next. This part's pretty important. So how many virtual CPUs? We're just going to go one, but we're going to go eight core. And the reason why I'm putting a fair bit on this is that I can always tune it down later. So we're just going to go one, Eight cores with two threads each core. Leave that custom and we're gonna go eight gigabyte. Again, I can tune this down. Um, just just a warning, um, If well, I have a lot of CPUs on this um, system, so it's perfectly fine, but um, the RAM will be taken away from your pool. So you don't actually wanna leave it at eight gigs for too long. Although I do have 64 gigs of RAM, so it's relatively fine. We'll be, we'll be fine. All right, disk type, create a new disk image. Um, yeah, leave it there actually, that'll be fine. Um, here's, you've got a choice. So you've got to um, let the machine know that it's on a virtual base machine or we just simulate a, just like a, ah, a location. Okay, so basically you could store it basically wherever you want to, but I already made the Linux Mint and we're going to just allocate 250 gigs because I may want to install a Windows on this a little bit later. Yeah, okay, corrects that. Uh, yes, I do want to keep that as a... Oh, this is actually, actually important. So, um, because it is a fully virtualized machine, um, you're going to want to... Um, it shouldn't actually matter, but if you want to have access to your hard drives, you need to actually keep it. So, my main system's been accessed here. So, that'd be for the hard drive. So, you do need to create an independent um, connection. So, you need to put an independent wire to actually switch to your actual switch. And so that's what my main system's on. You can do it like that, but you won't be able to get access to your hard drives doing it the way that I'm doing it. So you need it, yeah, two separate switches. So that's fine. And this is actually important. So we're gonna go to our works folder, works drive, OS. And yeah, you do need to make that full pathway very obvious so it knows where it's looking for. Next, GPU, that's good. And yeah, that's gonna be our system. Alrighty, so once you've done that, follow the steps that I've taken carefully. Boom, we're gonna start at OS. This will do the installation process. Display. And yeah, we're just gonna start Linux Mint. Now normally I would um, adjust the screen, but for our purposes at the moment, because I wanna actually put this in a smaller window, I will leave it as it is. And there we go. So we haven't actually installed the media yet. This is a feature that Linux has is that lets you um, play around with the OS a little bit before that. So if what I'll do, 
what you could do, I'm going to leave it there for now because I want to actually have this in a smaller window. But once you're happy with your iOS, you change the resolution there and you can go to your full, um, oh, well, if you're running a 4K monitor, yeah, good luck to you. Um, oh, it doesn't, yeah, okay. But for now, that's all I'd go to. But because I want to scale down the window. And if you want to, we just have a quick look at our system so you make sure no bugs happening. Okay, so it's registering all our cores, hyperthreading, so all that's virtualized fine. All right, we're just going to install the media. Ah, there we go. English Australia. Right, thank you. Install media. Uh, yeah, I guess. I've got plenty of space on the hard drive. Yes, so if you have anything on the disk, yep, you won't be seeing it again. Yep, we know what we're doing. Melbourne. Yes, I am actually in Melbourne. Where the docs and stuff are, though. That's all you guys get in my name. John. Smith, and we're going to call this uh, uh, probably just Pro Smith. Computer name VM, Project Smith VM. Pick username. We're going to go Pro Smith here. Oh, that's right. It doesn't like any, um, oops, any capital letters. Yeah, I think. All right. Oopsies. It's going to give you a warning, a short password, but, and who cares? Log in automatically. All right. This will actually take a while. All right. Now that we've done this, I'll let you continue testing, but we're not going to do that. And we're not going to restart. What we're going to do is fully shut down and quit. Shut down. All right. And fantastic. Now what we're going to do to our virtualization, so once we've done the installation, we're going to have to modify it. And the reason why we do that is because we don't want to install it again. So we're just going to go to modify. This is the, so this is basically our installation pathway and they call it CD-ROM here. We're just going to go simply uh, delete, delete device. Okay. Now that we've got our, this is actually us starting the operating system for the first time. And we're going to go hit display. That'll give us our remote and we're booting into it. Yeah, letting us know that we're connected to the internet. First steps. Um, well, if you're running a GPU, you'd want to go to driver manager. But for us, um, what I'd recommend before doing anything is just update it, see if there's any updates. Uh, really? Okay. And it's just going to give you a new version of the update manager. Um, you do need to remember the password that you made at the start. Oh, wow. And that just goes, yeah, anyway. Install that, that'll take some time, but once you, yep. And it's gonna ask you a password again. Oh man, do any of you guys remember the good old Vista days? That was a great operating system. Now, of course, people out there had a potato, so mix that plus with Apple marketing and you'd believe that it was the worst operating system ever, but unironically, yes, I'd actually say that um, Vista was actually probably one of my favorites. Firefox, not a big fan of that browser, but anyway. If you want to, you can feel free to install um, Microsoft Edge. It works on Linux, so that's basically one of the things that I like to do. Uh, welcome, yeah, we don't need that. Microsoft Edge. Oh, I probably should have gone to download, download Edge. And there we go, and you can install it on your Linux. Actually, good operating, uh, good browser for Linux. Uh, we won't be doing that on the virtual machine though. I do have it on my um, normal machine. All right, we're just gonna do a reboot now. All right. Yay, we're connected. All right, well, that worked out relatively well. Now it's time. Let's just have a little look around at our network. Browse network. Okay, so we've got my Unraid server, but we don't have my true NAS on this computer, but. Mm. 
I think I just call myself John here. All right, yeah, and that's basically my current YouTube projects and most of them that I've done. All right. Now, as you see, we didn't have our access to our um, to the actual true NAS, so we're going to go going to connect manually to server. Windows share, and we're going to this will be blurred out, but you're going to type your address. Alrighty, just so we're clear, um, the address that you type in is the set of numbers that you use to access your dashboard via internet browser. So whichever one you use, it's the set of numbers. So you'd use the same ones in here, and this will also be blurred out. So I don't know how much value. And our domain name, uh, let's let's go through the steps of making sure that we get this right. So well, this, this is why I didn't want to expand the window, although you can easily do that. You go to display, but this is just so I can operate the OS from a smaller screen. And what is our name? TrueNAS, host name, TrueNAS. So that's where we're getting that from. Oops. shares and we're going to do this individually for each one so for a share we're just going to type in um, whoops username we already established that in the other video And this will be the password that we set at the very start of our installation. So, um, so just to double check if you've forgotten your username, we'll just go through that. Um, it'll just be in the permissions. View permission, and there we go. That's our username and group name. Uh, go back to our shares. Go back to our OS window, and I think we're good. Oh yeah, we're going to want to add a bookmark and we're going to name this. This is our works drive. So I'm just going to call it work. Call it workbench and connect. Oh no, that didn't work. We need our actual full password. I must have done that properly. Ah, so this would have been the password that you would have set to verify you as a user when you first um, made your profile. Not, not the actual uh, root password. And there we go. So we've got the OS. This is what we used. Untitled photo. And we could just make sure that we have permission to um, manage, create a new folder. Boom. All right, no problem there. All right, to get access to your mass storage, now it's just simple as repeating the process again. Connect to the server, Windows share, Type in your address, which will be blurred out in this video, but. And just to be clear, absolutely clear, the password is what you, you use the same pers password as the one that you set up for your credentials. And that was in a previous video, if you're not sure. Uh, add bookmark, I don't know, what are we gonna call this? Just. Gonna, I want to say mass storage. All right. And boom. That's just all it is. Now, the negative side of this is to manage your actual storage or your current project. Um, because this is truly a fenced off virtualization machine, you're actually going away from the true NAS server to the switch, then back to the true NAS server. Uh, it's not the most elegant way, but it is a 10 gigabit switch, so it's not too bad. But all right, we're just going to do a quick, um, little benchmark of our special hard drive. So first one we're going to um, check, TrueNAS, mass storage. All right, we do the, that's the SSD, the middle one. We're going to do our mass storage. And the very last one, we're going to do our just SE drive. So you guys won't be here for, well, it takes a long time, but I'll show you the values and then have a quick discussion. All righty. 
Now that we skipped past through this, so remember this is the SSD workspace. This is the mechanical hard drive, and there's only six um, mechanical hard drives, and this is just a, well, this is just the result of um, having a very large um, RAM cache pool for the hard drive. So this is why the performance is quite high for mechanical hard drives. And this is just the M.2 drive that I have connected to my current system. So you can see just the difference. So the limiting factor here, looking at the numbers, they're not that different from each other, though because this pool, this is the mechanical hard drive, doesn't have a cache uh, or any SSD speed up apart from what's inbuilt in the hard drives, it is still advantage running it an SSD for just for my working projects that I currently have. So this would be for the video editing and whatnot. But as we can conclude here, the numbers aren't that dissimilar from each other. So the conclusion here is, uh, yeah, my limiting factor is actually the 10 gigabit network. Okay, that basically concludes our installation. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame about the drawback. Um, I will give you a video at the end just showing you what is actually going on and why it actually drives me nuts. Man, if you've seen my video talking about a North Bridge and South Bridge, then the CPU, oh, this, this will, you're going to love the outro to this. But so that basically concludes that. I'm very happy with the way the video went. So if you liked the video, please like. And if you want to see more content like this, um, please subscribe and... Project Smith Tech signing out. Thank you very much. Peace. Oh man, you guys are going to love this. So for those who followed me on the X58 uh, build, complaining about the North and South Bridge, let me show you. So in this box, I've got the true NAS running and on the true NAS, I have a virtualization machine. Now, if we go to my 10 gigabit uh, RJ45 port, you see that I've got, I'm actually currently running dual band. This one's going to my uh, true NAS and this one's actually operating as the virtualization machine. Now for me to manage the hard drives in the same box on the virtualization machine, I have to go from here to my 10 gig network port back here to the true NAS. Yeah, definitely not ideal. Now Wendell did have a video up. I'm gonna share a link um, how you could do it better than the way I did it, but I thought I'd share this anyway. Peace.